Hi there, I'm Chilton Webb, and this is Glycon. Glycon is a motion capture system that uses your VR headset to perform the motion capture. I want to show you a cool new thing in this upcoming version, and then I need to get back to work on trying to get this new version out the door. So I'm going to pop up the HUD, and we're going to take a look at the new arena mode. Uh, this allows you to replace everything you see around you uh, with your own environment. To do that a little easier, I'm going to switch to a different camera so you can kind of see what I see here. Okay, so here are the options. The dojo is the built-in one. Now, these over here are some instructions. If you take your own VR as, or your own 3D assets and you put them in the Glycon Files folder, Arenas, and then uh, anything under that, you put them in that folder basically, in the Arenas folder, then they will show up over here when you click these buttons. So here's one of them. Here is a car that I've got out of a scene. Here is an entire scene from Unreal. Here is a room that I got out of um, iClone. And then we're back to the dojo. So what you do is you pick one of these that you want to use and you click this button, you tap this button here. Okay, so I'm gonna do that now. And um, we'll just go through these and I'll show you how they work. Now you notice here I've got scale and I've got these buttons here. And these are the rotation. And the reason this is important is because when you bring your model into the scene, it may not be rotated in a way that you want it to be. For example, this Honda Civic is clearly on its side. Okay, well, let's say that I wanted to uh, sit inside this Civic. Well, it's not going to happen here. So I can use the hand controllers. I can use the joysticks to move it around. I, on the right joystick, if I push it forward, it will move the object farther away from me, and it will move me, basically this does the uh, slide it around on the floor. And the left joystick will allow me to lift and lower the object in 3D space. Okay. So now that we've pushed it out a little bit, I'm going to try these rotation buttons here. Okay, that's not right. Uh, we'll try this one. That's a little better. Okay, so now I could sit inside this car if I wanted to. One of the problems here though, is that a lot of 3D models um, like this one don't have anything on the inside. They don't have an inside that you would actually want to use. So just keep that in mind, you know, you want to, if you're going to uh, have some scene where you want to be inside something, um, make sure it actually has an inside. A lot of the models that you find on things like the 3D warehouse websites, um, they look nice from the outside, or maybe they're game ready models. Like this one is a decimated uh, version for a video game. It looks great at a distance, but up close, you can see a lot of issues. Okay, so let's pop into another one here. And I'm going to push this model a little farther out, away from me. Let's go to the next one. This is the scene from Unreal. You might recognize it if you're used to using Unreal. Okay, so if I wanted to interact with the scene, I could. I could turn around and interact with it, but as you can see, um, the, uh, the chair and stuff, those are all behind me. So this doesn't really work for me. So let's, uh, let's pop up the HUD again. Oh, I'm going to go in here and turn off visibility for my trackers. That's not a necessary thing right now. Okay, so let's go back in here. And if this, if this window is active, then using the uh, joysticks allows it to move around. If the HUD is hidden, the joysticks do not do anything. They just do the, uh, well, whatever, whatever mode you're currently in. But in this case, they're not going to do anything because... I'm in edit mode, and uh, nothing's going on. Okay, so we want to rotate this thing around. Let's see what happens. That did not do it. That kind of did it. Okay, so now it's behind my wind, my mirror, and I want to pull this over closer to me. So I'm using the right joystick to do that. Now, if I hop, if I put it in a, um, a different mode, let's do this one. There you go. 
okay, we'll do this one. Okay, you'll notice that um, in this camera setting, you, you the uh, table is right in front of me. So there we go. Maybe that's not the best one to use for this. So we'll try a different camera. How about that? Okay, so now if I wanted to walk around and interact with this environment, I could. Um, right now, in, in reality, I'm sitting at my desk, so I'm not going to be walking around here and interacting with it. But this will allow me to record my animation and then take that animation and export it and, and then uh, take that into Unreal, for example. And if I went over to this table and picked up a, the thing in the middle, which currently is attached to the table, so I can't pick it up. But if I were to go over to the table and say, uh, uh, pushed a button on the table or something like that, I could export this animation, uh, take that straight into Unreal, and and map my character onto that, and then have that character uh, replay that animation. The point behind doing this, as opposed to using a live system inside Unreal, the entire point behind this is to create canned animations that are completely custom for whatever you're doing, so that you can take those into Unreal or your or Unity or your 3D environment, whatever you want. Um, and and replay those animations there. Uh, there is a place for live animation, absolutely, in Unreal and, and live production um, in general. But if you're only one person and you have multiple people in a scene, you can't play all of them. So this allows you to create FBX animations and BVH animations and very easily uh, create the animation, save it out, and then reuse it over and over later. Okay, so now we've looked at this uh, Unreal scene, and this, what I did was, I went into Unreal, and I'll show a little, uh, I'll have a little screenshot of this uh, in the video, but what I did was I went into Unreal, I went to the asset, to the, to the scene asset, and I exported it as an FBX, and it exported everything in the scene and dumped it onto one FBX file that I put in the Glycons file, uh, what is it, the arenas folder, and then I was able to pull it in here. So here's another one. This is the one that you probably saw from an earlier video. Uh, this one is a much larger scene. This is from iClone. Okay, let me switch uh, cameras here so you can see a little better what's going on. There we go. So here we have a table and uh, some chairs. Over here we have a couch. I can rotate this. Okay, so in this case, rotating the y-axis is allowing me to move around the, the um, uh, to, to rotate it basically on the upper axis. So that works. Okay, so if I wanted to record a scene where I'm sitting over here in front of the TV, uh, I could certainly do that here. If I wanted to record a scene where I'm over here at the table, I could do it like this. Oops. And that's all it takes. Um, now I'm able to place my actor in the world where I want it to start, and then my scene, when I act it out, when I record the motion capture, will be recorded in the world at that location. So that's in version 40. Um, it's almost done. I have a few more tweaks I have to do to, uh, to the tracking system. You know, um, this is one of those deals where I add a feature, and in order to make the feature actually completely usable in a way that's really easy and intuitive to everyone, I have to come up with all this other stuff. So this is what I had to come up with in order to make the arena system actually work. Uh, this was all from, you know, one suggestion of basically, can I use my own, uh, can I use my own arena? Absolutely. And then uh, the details of that, that's where it got tricky. So in this next version, this is the big deal, and the other big deal is the new motion tracking system. Um, which has a ton of, uh, of little uh, uh, things you can tweak. And I'll get to those in another video soon. Thank you very much. For more information, go to glycon3d.com, and I can't wait to see what you guys do with this one. It's going to be awesome. Thanks.